This is WGBH TV Channel 2, Cambridge, Boston, and it's time now for Louis Lance News and Comment. Thursday, January 3rd, 1957, here now, Louis Lance. Good evening, everybody. I'm Lou Lance, and here's what's happening. Governor Foster Fercolo said today that the outgoing administration and Governor Herder left Massachusetts the worst financial mess in our history. In our, in one of the most unusual inaugural addresses ever heard on Beacon Hill, in the history of the Massachusetts governorship, Fercolo characterized the state's fiscal situation as deplorable and shocking. Fercolo left only one avenue of solution open, new taxes. These he said he will deal with later this month on his budget message. Fergal said in an events program for Massachusetts would require the spending of an additional $90 million. He did not say how the should be raised. A special oath was administered to Governor Fergal by his father, Dr. Charles L. Fergal of Springfield. The governor took the oath written by a friend just before he gave his inaugural address. Fergal took the oath with his right hand raised in his father standing at the governor's right. The governor's left hand was on the bubble held by his mother. The oath. Do you swear to govern with no thought of personal gain, but solely in the belief that the service is in his own regard, and govern not only in justice with righteousness, but also with an abiding compassion for the poor, the oppressed, and the affected, and the helpless, and the unfortunate, with sympathetic understanding of the problems and needs of this who cannot fully help themselves, and withstand character of the charity and Tolerance and fervor to govern in the name of humanity for all humanity without regard to race, creed, color, or station of life. With firmness where weakness may be easier, with statesmanship rather than political experience, patiently to fit the temper of the times, where haste meets better than suit the temper of the mind, and yet with a vision boldly and courageously be also with humility, mm, seriously yet striving and even to be the good officers, the better to solve great problems, being strong where act Acquaintance of obligation might prefer frailty and wit in and not facing all future without regret and lately to govern in the things and code conscious as to the best of your ability. The end. Entering questions of conviction of the nothing must stand in the way of the people. Do you swear to govern and help you God? Yes, sir. And here are the inaugural method highlights from Governor Furcolo. We have inherited the worst financial mess in the history of our Commonwealth. Four years ago, uh, the outgoing administration left a state debt of $364 million directing contingent. Today, the outgoing administration has left with a state debt of $721 million. Four years ago, the outgoing administration left a AAA state credit rating, the highest credit rating the state can enjoy. Today, the outgoing administration has lost this highly valued AAA credit rating, a considerable impairment of our credit standard the day of reckoning. Is there the cold and harsh fact which must be clearly recognized? And this is a photo of Governor Fercolo accepting the Ben Butler Bible from Governor Herder today, a state house ceremony. The tradition is the outgoing governor handing over the Bible and official key to the state house dates back to 1884. And this is the former governor doing the traditional long walk in a top hat. Okay, and on the other news, there is Gina Logan going to have a baby. Yes, confirm. Is Meryl Merrill going to have a baby? Maybe unconfirmed. These developments on the stork came today several thousand miles apart. Rumors have been flying that the stitch light lights will be fine for both international beauties. The word about Gina came from Gina herself at Rome. I must confirm and said that the Italian film booty that, that I'm expecting a child. Then crossed up to the latest denial of her husband, Dr. Milo Skodik, 100%. Cindy yesterday, he said it would since so. Today, however, he said that the baby is due in July. At New York, Marilyn and her husband, playwright Arthur Mill, went into the no comment routine on that subject of whoever Marilyn is expecting. We risk not make no comment on that, said Miller just before the couple took off for a two week Jamaica vacation. Washington, a group of maritime experts reported today that the town liner Andrea Doria that sank after a collision July 25th would have been survived and have been in compliance with the United States safety standards. The experts were appointed by the House Merchant Marine Committee. They made a study of the collision of the Andrea Doria and the Swedish ship Stockholm off the Nantucket Light in the Atlantic. Boston and the rest of the New England tripped in and shook again today in the grip one of the worst cold snaps in years. The official temperature in Boston slid to a low of 8 degrees at 6 a.m. Join in today's frostbite and cold where 15 mile an hour winds that 
turn car tips white and then just leave blue on the fingers there. Since the Nemin readings netted over the region Sunday, there has been enough thawed in the two holiday weekend storms to fill a canteen cup. This morning's low reading was only 3 degrees above yesterday's low at 5 degrees, and in Weather Bureau at Bristol Airport, only hopefully sees warmer temperatures come into the area sometime tomorrow. The Bureau expects temperatures to climb into the low 20s today, dropping in again to a low about 15 tonight. It added that warming no, back in 1939 this day, the temperature rose to record 62 degrees. The record low for the day came in 1904 when it dipped to 1 below 0. At 5.30 o'clock, it was 7 below in Portland, Maine, 2 below in Caribou, Maine, 1 in Montpelier, Vermont, 4 above in Concord, New Hampshire, and 2 above in Worcester. In Nantucket, it was 15 unofficial reports, however, including those from the frostbitten communities around Boston, showed readings ranging from 0 to 10 below 0. The normally cold and inhabited spot in New England, Mount Washington, was not the worst today. The reading of the summit showed only 5 below 0, but a 6 mile an hour wind chill was blown yesterday. The temperature on the mountain top was 22 below 0. Former Governor James Michael Curley got out of bed for a short time today as his post operation continued to operate. Dr. James Sekedi, Assistant Superintendent of the City Hospital, said the 82 year old politician left his bed without difficulty. He is eating well and said it is quite comfortably, Sekedi said. Curl's condition is still listed as critical because of his age and the possibility of his complications. However, he is now taking and retaining solid foods according to Chetty. Hospital spokesman said Curly is very con corruptive, mentally alert, and extremely responsive. His visitors are still limited as many members of his family, plus a few old friends and associates. Boston Department and Specialty Stores, with a few exceptions, will be open tomorrow night for the convenience of shoppers. Washington Democrats took the controls of the new 85th Congress today after a brief Senate scare. They started a session already confronted with a momentous foreign affairs issue. President Eisenhower will go before joint sessions Saturday to present this grave condition. He will request for defense that approval to use U.S. troops anyone. Of U.S. troops. Rising oil stocks left a late rally in the stock market today. The petroleum group shot up sharply as one of the leading crude producers boosted the power of crude oil prices. Superior Oil of California, one of the blues blue chips, traded at $1.295, up $85. Peter Wings will have the weather coming up after this commercial break here on the Lewis Lions News and Comments. Stay tuned. Coming to next on Channel 2, starting at 6.45 p.m. will be backgrounds. Then at 6.45 p.m. will be backgrounds. Then 7 o'clock will be Riders of the Day. Then 7.30 will be Spanish Food TV. 8 p.m. will be the Constitution and Human Rights. 8.30 Frontiers of Health. 9 o'clock will be Sonatas. That's all coming up on Channel 2. And over on our sister station, 89.7 FM, WGBH, will be the 7 o'clock U.S. Weather Bureau Report. 7.15 will be Carnival of Books. 7.30, Boston College Citizen Seminar. 9 o'clock will be Violin, Lynn, and Piona Sonatas. Then 10 o'clock will be Poetry and Song. 10.15 p.m. will be the newscast. And 10.30 will be Music from France, all on WGBH 89.7 FM in Boston. And WGBH TV Channel 2 in Boston. Stay tuned. And these are pictures of me without my hat, my gloves, my jacket open for a period of four minutes of the wind. See the red? That's heat. If you're not completely bubbled up, the wind literally pulls the, the heat right away. Okay, you are on the air, Peter, in about 20 seconds of their time. 20 seconds of their time here. 15 seconds of their time. 15 seconds of their time. Okay, 10 seconds of their time. 10 seconds of their time here. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, cue.
And now WGBH TV Channel 2 in Boston presents Peter Wiggins and the weather. Thursday, June 3rd, 1957. And now, Wiggins. Good evening, everybody. On this Thursday, June 3rd, 1957, right now, our current conditions at Logan Airport, Boston, Massachusetts, at 6.30 p.m. on this June 3rd, 1957, we got a temperature 22 degrees out of temperature, but the wind chill is 9 above zero with a dew point about 7. The humidity 53%, barometer 3.18 inches visibly, 50 miles per winds west, about 15 conditions, close skies. Okay, let's take a look at our current conditions around the nation. It's 22 in Norwood, 21 in Taunton, 21 in Plymouth, 21 out in Bedford, and in Hines and Moss Venue, 26 in Nantucket, 20 out in Providence. A pair of 10s in Lemonster, Fitchburg, and Worcester, 19 up in Bedford and Lawrence, 22 in Beverly, 20 in Springfield and Westfield, and then Pittsfield and North Adams, 16 out in Albany, 31 out in New York City, 20 in Bridgeport, 20 in New Haven, 20 out in Hartford and, and Bradley, in Winslow, Connecticut, 20 out in Keene, New Hampshire, 20 in Benetton, Vermont, 20 in Rutland, Vermont, 19 in Nashua, New Hampshire, 17 out in Manchester, New Hampshire, 18 in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, 13 in Calcutta, New Hampshire, and 11 up in Portland, Maine. Here. All right, let's take a look at our national map situation and chills. Cold air continues to hover around New England, but the region is without storms today. A large snowstorm reported in central western Canada extended down in the area in the north central United States and areas in Cape. Direction of the wind that's cold for air moving in the northeastern, down for the northern plains and mild air in the southeast states. So, Forecast from Boston City will, will go like this. Fair and cold tonight with lows 10 to 15 degrees downtown and when you get out, suburbs will be slightly above zero in the suburbs. Friday, increased conditions and not as cold, whatever. Northwest wind about 25 to 35 miles per hour with the afternoon diminution. General tonight, moderate southwest winds on Friday. Very good temperatures for the state at Boston, high 62 in 1913 and low one below in 1904. For Massachusetts, Rhode Island, sunny and cold this afternoon. Fair and cold, and cold tonight. Friday increase of cold is not so cold. Connecticut. Fair not so, quite so cold tonight. Friday cloudy with light snow luckily by afternoon except snow changing along the coast. Vermont. Fair and fall by increase of cloud in the slate tonight and not quite so cold. Friday cloudy and occasional light snow and not so cold. For New Hampshire. In Maine. Fair and continue cold tonight. Friday increase of cloud is and not so cold. For East Port to Block Island, small craft warnings displayed from the East Port to Block Island. Gusty northwest winds up at 25 to 35 miles per hour. And this afternoon, dimension to Jelenol. Tonight, and becoming in the moderate south to southwest on Friday. Fair weather and excellent visibility this afternoon and tonight, except for the snowflakes, will be at the sea. Increase the clouds with good visibility Friday. Low water tide about 6.51 p.m. and about. Eight minutes from now, first quarter moon during 9th at 2.06 a.m. in the west. Full moon during 16th at 1.21 in the morning to the west. Plus quarter moon during 22nd at 4.40 p.m. to the west. And new moon during 3rd at 4.24 p.m. to the west. And that's going to be it for the weather with Wiggins. And that's going to be it for the Lewis Lions news and comment on this. During 3rd, 19th I'm Louis Lions alongside Peter Wiggins. I hope you have a good night and we will see you tomorrow. Good night.